So for most beginner to intermediate artists, there's kind of an expiration date on how long we're proud of a piece of art we made. Uh, it could be minutes, it could be months, and the hope is that as you improve, that time gets to be a little bit longer. And then eventually, hopefully, we can all get to the point that Tom Hanks got to when he said that he's made maybe three good movies in his career. As far as artists go, that's a great percentage, Tom. And as much of our own worst critics as we are, it makes sense. We should be growing. If you genuinely believed, nope, I never did anything cringeworthy as a teenager, you might still be a teenager 10, 20 years later. Like Tom's son, Chet Hanks. That's... that's mean. If you feel like all art you've ever made is equally great, there's probably a good chance that you aren't improving, as harsh as that sounds. And of course, the opposite is true. Recognizing what you could have done better is self-evident that you know better now. So I finally feel like I'm in a place where I've made a few good pieces of art. Less and less frequently do I write off something from the last few years as truly bad. For the pieces in this video, I actually revisited some art and characters that I liked to see what I could do to add on what I've learned since making them. And some things you could do too. Real quick, you may not know if you only watch my educational stuff or YouTube thinks you only watch my educational stuff. There's less than a week left to back the Beko plush. More on that at the end. It's been awesome to see all the support it's gotten and it'd be great to fully fund the campaign. Hit the comments up with a, it's Beko and let's see what happens. Ramsel here, which you probably saw in the thumbnail, is one of my favorite trading card illustrations from about two years ago. From a storytelling and composition standpoint, it really sells this serene, hopeful vibe. It's a very simple piece. But if I could say anything about it though, there's always more that you can add to a painting like this, and it comes off a little flat. And while Ramsel is gray, you can do a lot more with a local gray color with colored light. Now, here's how I feel about light in an illustration context. There are aspects of light that should be correct. For example, if you had shadows and ambient occlusion that's all over the place from different directions of light sources, it will likely look confusing. But on the other hand, I want to reverse engineer light that looks good and does the best to accentuate the story of an image. Remember that all of this is made up it just has to feel right. For one, I'm removing most of the line art elements that were left over on Ramsel, adding dimensional planes of light in places like the face, improving the fidelity of the image, and infusing it with more color. It might look like a straight up crank on the saturation bar, but adding this much chromatic variation is all about setting the table and building towards bright colors from more subtle ones. The final product is something I'm pretty happy with, and it works better when blown up to be bigger than that trading card size. Obviously, there's extra detail that is naturally adding to what was already there. It's possible that without knowing that I reworked the illustration, someone that remembered my original and then saw the new one might just think, yeah, that's the same painting. Kind of like how an HD remake of a game looks how you remember it. Next up though, what if I like the design of a character but want to make an illustration of them that's more exciting? That's what ended up happening with the Wanderlumen. His original piece was serviceably nice, and the actual design of the character doesn't need to change at all. But I wanted a more dynamic painting of him and his glow pups. All of my initial sketches had him in some kind of free fall, and while there was an idea to have him mid-air with a giant beast on the ground, it got to be too complicated of an image for everything to read clearly on a trading card size. Simplicity is really the key here, and of course, that reads well at any size. I got some great initial feedback from my friend John Lauren on my lighting, and tried to build towards colors that were actually more extreme than those local colors of the character. By making the general colors of this painting limited to mainly yellows, reds, oranges, and purples, mainly those warm shades, we can push more extreme values and saturation for strong and exciting colors that are still harmonious. And of course, rim lighting is something I'm doing both on Ramsel and on this piece to perhaps separate out things of the same color and just add accents where we want importance. Plus, I'm avoiding values on this piece that are so dark that they don't show up well in print. Another great way to add to this variance is to have cool or complementary bounce lights and shadows. When it's believable, it just makes those colors a higher contrast. As much as we might want to move past old work, I think there's times when it's okay to keep both the baby and the bathwater. Critically re-examining a piece and painting over, sketching, refurbishing, if you will, feels like a great exercise from a learning perspective and a way to add a literal fresh coat of paint to something to bring it up to speed with your current work. 
By the way, with that Ramsel piece, that's all overpainting. I'm not really going back through the layers. I'm just treating it as a flat image and building from there. That's really helpful if you work digitally and are used to sorting through lots of layers. Sometimes it's great to have a clean slate and merge everything down in a new document. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, how do I word this? How old is the oldest piece of art of yours that you still like? And is there anything that you'd change about it? Let me know in the comments. Or alternatively, just spam It's Biko in the comments because there's just a little bit of time left, about a week as of the airing of this video, to grab a Biko plush over on Makeship. This is a one-time deal. It's been so nice seeing your support of the project this past month, even if it hasn't been a little stressful to hit our goal. Supporting the campaign directly supports the creation of my animated series, Stormfellers. And I'd love to get this all the way funded for all the people who did support it to successfully get their plushes. And hey, if you are typically only inclined to click a video of mine if there's a how-to or five tips in the title, just know that I can't help but inform and teach through my videos. And I know at least for me, some of my best learning has come from watching others go through the process of making something that they're passionate about. And that's what I'm trying to do with Stormfellers and its making of series, which there's a new installment of from a few weeks ago. It was amazing to see so many of you at Lightbox Expo last week. I got to meet some longtime mutuals, fans, other artists. Thanks so much to everyone who stopped by. And for the first time, because of the work put into that Wanderlumen painting, it blew up well, like the banner looks good at eight feet tall, which I was pleasantly surprised by. That wouldn't have happened if I was only aiming for the dimensions of the trading card. My course and Biko's backpack are in the same place they have been in the description. Click here for the behind the scenes on my animated series Stormfellers. Thank you for watching and have fun creating.